Hello and welcome back to Aviation Ivy. I'm Shantanu and today we'll be learning about runway friction, its importance and measurement. So hold it tight because today's ride will be a more pumpier one. So let's get started. Would you like to guess the weight of an aircraft? A narrow body aircraft weighs about 75,000 of kgs. So while landing, the forces between the tire and the surface should be such that it should neither be too much repulsive nor too much attractive. So the friction plays a very important role at that time. What is runway friction? Runway surface friction characteristics defines the roughness of the runway surface that will provide for the braking action of the aircraft and will decelerate the aircraft after touchdown and also help maintain its directional control during landing or after a decision to reject a takeoff. The surface is ultimately formed by aggregate microstructure and macrostructure, which is further discussed, which singularly and collectively are responsible for providing braking action to the aircraft. Aircraft braking coefficient is dependent upon the surface friction between the tires of the aircraft and pavement surface. Less friction means less aircraft braking coefficient and less aircraft braking response. What would happen? if optimal runway friction characteristics is ignored. First, a loss of directional control which results in asymmetric nautical forces further resulting in symmetric engine power that is engine failure on takeoff leading to abandoning the takeoff. Second, loss of aircraft stability because of asymmetric wheel brake application on landing or during abandoned takeoff. Third, loss of aircraft directional control due to significant crosswind component. As it is understood that the above events may critically affect aircraft stability, so in each case the runway surface friction plays a vital role in counteracting these forces or movement. Now let's see what the regulator has to say about the friction of the runway. Regulatory requirements of runway friction testing. IQ, the regulator at the global level, says in Annex 14, which sets only the principles which cover the provision of paved runway surfaces with acceptable friction characteristics. Contracting states or the countries are given the authority to develop detailed scheme to provide acceptable level of safety both in respect of objective and operational determination of the surface friction. Now let's see what our DGCA, Directorate General of Civil Aviation, has developed in accordance to the IQNX 14. Car Civil Aviation Requirements Section 4 Aerodrome Standard and Licensing Series B Part 1 which requires all aerodrome operators to undertake friction testing periodically in order to identify runways with low friction when wet and also to identify or define and publish in their AIPs the minimum friction level or MFL which will require notice to airmen no time if breached for any given runway. States must also establish a maintenance planning level or MPL for runway friction below which prompt corrective action is required. ADAC 1 of 2019 contains the guidance or material that are to be included in the maintenance program by aerodrome operator to ensure continuous monitoring of runway friction characteristics. To properly measure and to bring the corrective action on the runway surface, the regulators have decided three types of friction levels. The first one, design objective for new surfaces, also called as DONS. It establishes the minimum friction level for a newly constructed or resurfaced runway surface. Second, maintenance planning level or MPL. Below this corrective maintenance action should be considered. Third one, minimum friction level or MFL. Below this, the information that the runway may be slippery when wet should be made available and corrective action should be initiated. One very important thing which governs the friction value is the runway surface texture. It's of two types. First one is macro texture and the other one is micro texture. The image which you could see below is of a runway surface which seems to be very smooth but actually when you zoom in or when you see through a microscope you will find particles like this. And these have their inherent roughness and the roughness between one particle and two particles. So a macro structure, macro structure is the difference between this crest and this smooth trough or this smooth surface. And the microstructure is the inherent roughness of the particle itself. So, macro texture is the structure made by the individual stone and is visible roughness that allows 
water to escape from beneath the aircraft tires. It becomes more important as a factor which can lead to aquaplaning. Come into play increasing speed, decreasing tire tread depth and increasing water depth. Aquaplaning is a phenomena in which when the aircraft makes contact with the runway surface and the surface is wet, a water layer, a water film is formed between the tires of the aircraft and the surface of the runway. So there is no direct contact between the surface and the aircraft tire. This phenomena is called as aquaplaning. Micro texture is the structure of the individual stone which have fine scale roughness which is detectable by touch rather than appearance. So micro texture has visible roughness and micro texture is something which can be felt by touch. It allows the tire to break through the residual water film and remains when the bulk of water has run off and is especially important at low speeds. Deterioration in the value of the friction coefficient for a given runway surface is also termed as runway contamination. So sources of runway contamination, mechanical wear and tear from aircraft rolling over the runway surface resulting in deposition of rubber on the surface. As you can see in this picture, there is too much rubber deposit due to continuous landing on the runway surface. Now due to this deposition of rubber, the friction value gets decreased and the surface becomes slippery. Local weather conditions like accumulation of snow, slush, ice, algae, which may result in reduction of runway friction characteristics. As you can see in this picture, the surface area of this taxiway and the associated runway is now filled or not completely but partially filled with snow, slush or ice, which will make the runway slippery. Failure of structure like gaps in runway surface, rutting, cracking. Sometimes what happens due to excessive heating of the runway and continuous landing on the runway, there is a probability of developing some cracks. In this picture, the cracks are much bigger, but sometimes fine cracks are formed, which will further reduce the friction of the runway surface and may result in aircraft damage or aircraft wheel damage, etc. Contamination due to fuel leakage. In this picture, there is an aircraft met with an accident. Fuel is spread all over the surface degrading the friction value of the runway surface. Surface friction measurement. Since contamination of runway surface is unavoidable, it is important to be vigilant on the deterioration of runway friction characteristics. This can be done by continuous measurement of the runway friction using devices which detect surface friction and are called continuous friction measuring equipment, CFME. Their primary application is the determination of reference friction levels on dry and artificially wetted surface. There are currently at least eight different types of CFME of which the grip tester and view meter are in widespread use. Usually CFME is stored behind a vehicle at a constant speed and a wheel with smooth tires is fitted with the equipment which can directly measure the friction and counter as you can see in the picture side by. Measurements are usually output to an onboard processor which when downloaded can produce tabulations and charts showing the friction level detected. Measurement of friction must be done along two parallel tracks to runway center line, 3 meter and 6 meter respectively, and two different speed that is at 65 km per hour, which determines the microstructure and the macrostructure, contaminants and overall drainage characteristics of the runway, and 95 km per hour, which indicates the macrostructure only. The average of these four runs can be averaged to find 100 meters average friction value and average friction value of the whole runway. In the image, you can see the test equipments and in that we are considering new meter which is the most basic and widespread type test tire tire a for this configuration for this new meter pressure is about 70 pass kilopascals speed we have two speeds 65 and 95 water depth now that wheel is run over a wetted surface that wetted surface has a depth of 1 mm in both the cases now for this dons is 0.72, MPL is 0.52 and MFL is 0.42 and for the speed of 95 km per hour, DONS is 0.66, MPL is 0.38 and MFL is 0.62 and this is how the rest of the table follows. Action to be taken as a result of runway friction assessment. 
if the friction level is below MPL, maintenance should be arranged to restore the friction level. If the friction level indicates a fall in trend, increase the frequency of runway friction assessment in order to identify any further or rapid deterioration and take appropriate action. If the friction level is below MFL, maintenance should be arranged urgently in order to restore the friction level and no time shall be issued advising that the runway may be slippery when wet. If the friction level is significantly below MFL, withdrawing of the runway from the use when wet must be considered and no time should be issued in that respect. Corrective maintenance action shall be taken when the friction characteristics for either the entire runway or a portion thereof are below a minimum specified friction level. I hope you have enjoyed the session. Do like, share and subscribe our work because your support is our motivation. Keep sharing, keep liking. You can also visit our website www.avationavy.com for any content. We have lots of content present there. You can directly connect to us on our LinkedIn pages of Anvesh Apal and Shantanugar. Now I am signing out. Go where you feel the most alive.